Hello there, welcome back to the kitchen table. Um, my voice is getting worse. For those of you who saw my video earlier today when I was on some over-the-counter medication, it didn't work. So um, tonight we have a glass of late bottled vintage port just to um, ease the throat, so uh, cheers. Oh, that's better. Right, so um, as promised, I'm going to go through how I actually fitted the Horizon FPV 5.8 and 2.4 antennas and how I modded the transmitter and the range extender to, um, to be able to accept them. These, or in fact any, because once you've done the mods, you're able to uh, put uh, cables in and, and you can you know experiment with different antennas. So what I'm going to do is I, I didn't have, I couldn't, I couldn't easily make a video um, of the actual construction. It was getting too fiddly. So I took a series of stills. So I'll walk you through those now. Um, for those of you who haven't opened up the antenna before, uh, sorry, the transmitter before, um, uh, what I did, as you'll see from this shot, I used a bit of egg box, egg crate foam from the lid of my uh, flight case, uh, which is pretty good to actually lay the transmitter on its face with the sticks being protected by the foam, because it's much easier to take the um, take the back off the transmitter if you do it this way round. Um, obviously, take the batteries out first, just in case. Um, and then what you need to do is release the um, the four screws. Um, when you've done that, just open kind of open the bottom first, make a little gap, and then you just need to sort of pull towards you while you're wiggling left and right, and that will release the collar where the um, stock antenna is. And then you should be able to carefully open the transmitter. Just watch out for the cable that runs between the, um, the main board and the battery um, compartment. Uh, don't tug that too hard. But uh, once you've done that, um, you should be able to see what we need to do and you'll you'll be able to trace from the antenna down the black wire that ends up at, on the main board in front of that large silver rectangle that is covered in silicon kind of gunk and that's what we need to um, get rid of so i found that actually using um, a combination of a craft knife or an exacto knife um, a razor blade um, I just wrapped the, um, I got an old school razor blade, double edged razor blade and wrapped the other side with tape um, just to protect my fingers and that was really good actually, a razor blade. Um, and uh, some tweezers, uh, basically over a period of a few minutes just gently sort of shaving away a bit of the silicon and pulling it and shaving and pull. And after a while you'll be able to free enough of the, um, the little pigtail as it's called there to, to be able to pull it off with a pair of pliers or even just get your thumbnail underneath. And remove the stock antenna and then you can take the pigtail that's provided in the with the horizon uh, antenna and attach it here as you can see and what I've decided to do is I didn't want to um, I wanted to sort of didn't want to mess about too much with the stock antenna at the top so if you can see here what I did was using the the front um, the front uh, part of the of the transmitter, the the uh, connector that's provided slots in to that already pre-cut groove quite nicely. Now, what it won't do, there isn't an equivalent groove on the other side. So when you actually put the thing together and join everything up, you'll find that there is, as you can see here, a bit of a gap. If that's aesthetically a problem for you, then get your Dremel out and and drill out a, a channel on the other side and you can get everything um, to close up neatly. I kind of wanted to just leave the option of putting everything back to stock should I want to. So I left it like this. It's, it's totally secure, it just has a bit of a gap. And then here's a top view and you can see how I've installed the um, 5.8 directional helical, helical, tomato, tomato uh, antenna. Um, and it's pretty good. So the next um, job is to obviously modify the range extender. So for this, you'll need a 1.5 mil hex driver because that's the size of the four screws you can see on the back of your range extender. 
when you've taken those out um, there are two tabs you'll see here one of them by the screwdriver blade at the top there and there's obviously a corresponding one on the opposite side um, once you've undone the four screws I found that using a something that's blunt and stiff plastic like a spatula or you know something similar um, you can sort of open up a little gap and then if you push those um, the top part the bit that's got the battery in, in this picture so push that away you can remove one side from the from the little um, clips and then you can work a bit on the other side that'll open things up for you just be careful because that you know that you can't easily remove the wire that connects the battery um, that's been sort of Sort of soldered and siliconed in, so just you know, be be cautious with that one. Then what you need is a very small double O size Phillips cross head screwdriver, uh, and you can remove the screws uh, that hold the circuit board in place. Underneath the circuit board, you'll find the two antennas. Now, I've decided to, as we look in this picture, take the existing um, pigtail off the top connector. And then I've removed the, um, the the two the antennas, and then that gives me an empty shell that I can I can drill. Out comes the Dremel, and what we need to do is make a hole big enough to accept this little tiny pigtail here, which is provided with the Horizon FPV kit. Um, now, here's mine installed. A little tip for you: uh, I install this slightly too low for comfort. In an ideal world, you want to install this a little bit higher up on the side. Um, I got it in okay, but it meant that I had to kind of put a bit of pressure on the the board and, and wiggle it around a bit, and it was a bit of a pain. Uh, if you're going to do it, I would suggest that you go up, and that will make things a bit easier for you. But that's the result, and it looks pretty good. It's in there. And then it's just a question of... Um, putting everything back together, putting the pigtail on the board, screwing it all in, putting the clips down. And then as you can see, a quick test, just to make sure I didn't fry anything, um, put the uh, the 2.4 antenna on and fired it up and we get a green light and, and it's good to go. Um, and then yeah, this is obviously, this is how everything ends up. It's not it's not too heavy at this end at all, actually. These things are pretty lightweight. And what I've done, um, as you can see, I've just put a little little kink in this one so that we've got, you know, a, a, a clear view. And what's quite good about this is that actually by moving the transmitter to get the 2.4 aiming at the aircraft, which of course we all know we should be doing, it's going to follow it with the 5.8. Uh, what I did was just go to the bottom of the garden. I left the um, left the vision in the kids' playroom, which is a conservatory. Went down to the bottom of the garden and tested everything out as far as I could today because I felt too bad to go out. About a hundred and thirty foot garden we've got, and uh, it went. It wasn't quite line of sight. It was through a wooden shed and through the glass of the conservatory. But I was I got an absolutely perfect um, camera view. And uh, I was able to just uh, you know do the CSC and fire the motors up, no problem. Um, obviously, there are risks in these things. Um, you know, there is a risk when you're taking this apart that you can do something, uh, damage the circuit board, break something. Similarly, with here, that goes without saying. Don't do these things unless you're a confident that you can get it right, or b you're prepared to buy another one of these or another one of these if you get it wrong. Um, it went okay for me. I'm absolutely limited skills in electronics. In fact, this is probably the most technical electronic thing I've ever done. <laughs> and it's gone okay. I've tested it out. Um, I'm going to try and go out in the next few days and actually do a, a, a range test to see if doing just this at this end, leaving the aircraft stock, has made things an improvement on what I was getting with the um, with the standard antenna and just the range extender, and I'll come back to you. But yeah, no, that was pretty pretty straightforward. It took me I took my time over it. It took me an hour. I went carefully. Tools you'll need: hex driver, small, you know, quality, accurate 
small Phillips. Uh, Dremel is was, was handy because I could do it here, but you know, if you've got any sort of drill, you could measure the size up. And uh, screwdriver, um, razor blade, and or exacto knives, craft knife, something like that would be my top tip for getting shaving that that silicon in, in here. Uh, and it went well. So uh, yeah, so far so good. Um, proof will be in the actual flying and I'll try and get one of those done over the next few days. But um, for those of you who haven't sort of, you know, ventured inside these bits and pieces, I hope that was, um, I hope that was useful for you. And um, yeah, thanks very much for